they have big shoes to fill and they're doing it pretty well until someone decided to age John up seven years. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Comic Island. My name is Joey and today we're exploring the hugely entertaining relationship between John Kent and Damian Wayne. John Superboy Kent might have that S symbol and the famous dad to skyrocket him to mainstream comics but that isn't enough. Enter Damian Wayne, the pseudo leader of the Teen Titans group. Will John join the Teen Titans much like the Superboys before him? Well, let's talk about it. By the way guys, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you smash that subscribe button, click that notification bell for more awesome Superman content like this one. So these series of videos wouldn't be possible without input from Tevia, our Patreon member. So I invite you to come hang out with us where there's ad-free content, early releases on videos like this, and your next video idea could be made here in Comic Island. Oh, and make sure you stay to the end where we discuss how John Kent and Damian Wayne are basically two halves of the same coin. Jonathan Samuel Kent is now 10 years old and he is discovering his powers for the first time. Not knowing what he is capable of, John for the first time accidentally laser blasts and roasts a bird and a cat in one go. Unfortunately, Kathy, the neighbor's daughter, saw the whole thing. John is developing powers similar to Superman, which prompted Clark to take John on his first mission to save a crew stuck in the Arctic. A Kraken presents itself. Instead of taking the Kraken head on, Superman instructs John to concentrate his laser beam right at the Kraken. John hits his father in the back a few times before getting the shot just right. But the boy's powers aren't consistent. At home, while chatting with Kathy above a tree branch, John accidentally cracks the branch causing him to fall, skin his knee, and knock himself out cold. Superman brings him to the dead Superman's Fortress of Solitude, which has the technology to analyze Kryptonians. We discover that John's invulnerability is a bit radical. His body is still adapting to human and Kryptonian genomes on a molecular level. This is also where we discover the Eradicator, a Kryptonian robotic enforcer, found his way to Earth and wants to restart the Kryptonian lineage. You see, John is the only one of his kind being half Kryptonian and half human hybrid. This makes him a target for the Eradicator who wants to cleanse the impure human half of him. After a battle that took the family to Batman's cave on the moon and with the help of the Hellbat armor, the Eradicator is defeated but the world is watching. Superman took the first step into the limelight and showed the world that Superman is not dead but very much alive. By the way guys, if you are a bit confused with Superman being dead or alive, this all happened in the last days of Superman event where New 52 Superman, after being exposed to the pits of apocalypse, his battle with Rao, and being trapped in the Argus kryptonite vault, is dying from radioactive kryptonite poisoning. He sacrificed his life fighting a Superman imposter, where he took the imposter to outer space to detonate but soups started to lose altitude and strength. This is when pre-Flashpoint Superman arrives to lend a hand exposing his existence to the Justice League. New 52 Superman dies. The Justice League is left without their powerhouse, but they now know the existence of another Superman who they do not trust. The world saw Superman die, but now, back to the scene on the moon, everybody sees Superman alive and well. Okay, back to John Kent, Superboy. During their battle with the Eradicator, John did ask Clark why not go to the Justice League for help. The reason is that Clark is not their Superman and the trust has not yet been established. More importantly though, he doesn't want Batman or Wonder Woman to probe his son. Clark wants to protect his son as much as he can, but John is getting bigger and will eventually need room to grow. John finally gets to go to school, but this takes a turn for the worse as Nowhere and Goliath, Damien's ally and a pet, kidnaps the boy. In the rush and adrenaline, John exhibits a new ability freeze breath, but not before passing out. He wakes up strapped to a chair and meeting his kidnapper for the first time, Damian Wayne. Left unchecked, Damian can do brash things, but this time he kidnaps the son of arguably the most powerful person on the planet. Bruce didn't arrive on time to stop Damian Wayne, and in comes daddy. Good thing Superman and Batman made peace fast, but not before trading insults. Damian is out of control, says Superman. John needs some control, says Batman. These two are as different in in every aspect as they come except for one thing. They are the sons of two of the most powerful and revered heroes in the DCU. One is a highly trained assassin trained from birth grown in an incubation tube. The other grew up somewhat normally with loving parents. One trained in the art of killing as early as he can walk and the other did house chores. One is part of a lineage belonging to the Ra's al Ghul and he is the son of the Bat. The other is the friggin son of Superman. One is human and the other is a hybrid who's got the potential to surpass Superman's power levels. 
This is the start of a new alliance and an amazing friendship between John Kent and Damian Wayne. But they must survive boot camp and each other first. They survived a series of tests set by their fathers while on their way to the Batcave. But Damian and John didn't do it together and they must learn to work as a team. At the Batcave, Batman sets a final and drastic test for the boys. He combined some of his most formidable foes into one being and allowed himself and Superman to be taken hostage which forces the boys to work together in order to save their family. On their first accidental mission together, Damien and John took on Lex and somewhat won. What actually happens was Damien used John as a distraction in order to get the info he needed from LexCorp. John was not pleased but Damien got what he wanted which led the boys to a kid whose entire family kept the powers from the Amazo virus epidemic that nearly spread across America a few years back. Long story short, Luther had a virus that broke free and became airborne. This virus gave people random superhuman powers but at the cost of their lives. The threat ended and a cure was created so everyone turned back to normal except roughly 3% of the infected. Reggie and his family were part of the three. Reggie's powers allow him to duplicate himself but at the expense of his sanity. He turned straight up evil and imprisoned his family going as far as creating duplicates of them so that he can kill the duplicates as he please. John Kent and Damian Wayne, with the help of Reggie's sister, who can control electronics, and with the backup of Lex Luthor, who's still a good guy, manage to take down Reggie aka Kid Amazo right before returning home and getting busted by their parents and guardian Lois and Alfred. On their next mission, Damien rudely abandons John Kent to lead the Teen Titans mission with his main team consisting of Aqualad, Beast Boy, Starfire, and Raven. But they hit a snag when the team lost the battle and Robin gets aged to his 70s. Since the Teen Titans does not officially have a leader and Damien is too old to care, the team recruits John's Superboy Kent as an official member. With the help of their new enforcer, the team easily takes down a man who managed to peek into the multiverse. The opening doorway is shaded in blue implying that Dr. Manhattan had a hand in connecting the villain with powers from another parallel universe. This all leads to Doomsday Clock but that's a story for another day. Just before the heroes wrap up, a dimensional doorway opens up and swallows John Kent and Damian Wayne. These two find themselves on a new world, possibly in a parallel universe. The villain they just defeated named Cracklow is known in this universe as a heroic magician who saved some refugees from a world-eating entity and placed them on this new world. After taking down a similar villain just hours ago, John and Damian realize that if they actually fully work together, they are pretty damn unstoppable. Much like the teamwork between Super Superman and Batman. Needless to say, the young heroes defeated the main villain who's actually the world they walked on, befriended two humans from possibly a different universe, the Golden Age universe, and left their mark as a new dynamic duo. John is the perfect balance to Damien, much like Yin and Yang. Damien and Bruce had the typical father-son relationship, but with much more heart whereas John serves as the perfect other side to the coin due to their age similarities. Damien is always going to be the brash, cocky, near anti-hero figure shown where he wanted to punish a pedestrian who was jaywalking, but John arrives to apologize and politely tells the man to use the sidewalk. Where Damien benefits John is allowing him to have the edge which keeps him intriguing. We've never had a full character like John before in the past, but we can draw direct comparisons from Con L Superboy. Yes, they have the Superboy title which is huge, but without the clever dialogue and the epic backstory with a promising future story arc, the character becomes bland, readers stop buying their comics, and the hero fades into obscurity. For John, he is following directly in his father's footsteps. Superman has the Dark Knight to balance him out, so it makes sense that Superboy has a son of the bat for the awesome chemistry and clever storytelling. Superman and Batman bickered a lot and DC has done an amazing job of bringing the light and dark chemistry back into the comics where we see two heroes who has nothing in common, not liking each other but having to team up and work with each other in order to save their city and sometimes the planet. We are not done yet, the discussion of Superboy John Kent and Damian Wayne is only halfway done. We haven't even had a chance to get into John Kent's relationship with his grandfather Jor-El aka Mr. Oz and his eventual aging up to 17 by Brian Michael Bendis. We have covered Super Sons issues 1 to 9 but you can continue the journey right now. So which Super Sons do you closely relate to, Superboy John Kent or the fourth Robin Damian Wayne? I have a soft spot for Damian Wayne not because of his brash headstrong cocky nature but the undertones of his psyche where he needs loved ones around him to be a better version of himself. Damian makes a lot of mistakes and that is something everyone can relate to. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video click like, smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.